Welcome to my channel, where the scariest stories come to life. Before we dive into today's chilling tale, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications, so you never miss a story. Now, let's get into the horror. My father has had some terrifying encounters with these entities, but this spine-chilling tale comes from my uncle, a man of faith who walked the fine line between traditional beliefs and his Christian religion. When my father told me this story, I wondered, could it be true? Could this actually happen? That part I'll leave up to you. My father had five brothers, him being the sixth and youngest. Stories of witches and the dark side of Navajo beliefs came from both his family and my mother's side. My uncle had worked for many churches, usually as a hired hand who could fix almost anything, from cars to the usual maintenance needed around a home. He was the man you went to if you needed help. One summer, while working on the water lines outside of a church, a pastor friend came to him, asking a question and seeking some advice. Being a good friend, my uncle noticed that the pastor seemed uncomfortable with what he was about to ask. The pastor asked if my uncle knew anything about skinwalkers. My uncle was taken aback and surprised that his friend would even bring this up. But once the question sank in, he realized it wasn't the first time people in his close circle had asked him about such things. Not wanting to be rude, my uncle asked the pastor why he wanted to know. That's when the pastor began telling him a shocking story, one that would make anyone wonder if it actually happened. The pastor had become friends with a family on the Navajo reservation. For privacy, I won't reveal the exact location. He had grown close to the parents, who were the first real friends he'd made since moving to the reservation. The family was tight-knit and had four kids, along with extended family in the area. Their only trouble came from their youngest son, who had started getting involved with the wrong crowd. At that point, the son had gotten tangled up with a local gang. The father told the pastor that the gang was ruthless and often violent. The family pleaded with the son to leave the gang, but he refused. After about a year in the gang, the son had become close with its leader, a feared and violent individual. Rumors began to circulate that the leader dabbled in black magic rather than skinwalking. Unfazed by these stories, the son stayed in the gang. Then one night, while hanging out at a member's house, the leader revealed that he did, in fact, practice black magic. He asked the son if he wanted to learn. Despite his fear, the son said yes. The leader told the son to meet him at a cemetery later in the week. When the day arrived, the son drove out to the meeting spot, feeling both nervous and scared. After a few minutes, they both walked down into the cemetery. Now, I won't explain what happened next, because, in Navajo tradition, it's taboo to describe such things. But what I will say is that they did horrifying things. After that night, the son left the gang, distanced himself from the entire crew, and became a born-again Christian. He had no contact with anyone from the gang for months. Then, one night, while shopping, the son ran into the gang leader. Shocked, he tried to avoid him, but the leader cornered him. The leader was furious and accused the son of betraying him. He told the son he was going to teach him a lesson, sending a cold chill down his spine. The leader warned him to watch his back, because no matter where he went, he would find him. Terrified, the son went to the pastor and asked for advice. The pastor, unsure of what to do, told him to keep faith in his beliefs and everything would be okay. He also suggested that the son seek traditional spiritual help. Months passed, and my uncle asked the pastor about the son. The pastor said he had given his advice, and now the family was living peacefully outside the reservation. You can believe this story if you want, but take this warning, don't look for what's in the dark, because there's always something out there that will answer back. My brother left Kansas in 2011 to live with my grandparents in New Mexico to finish his college. He attended college in the neighboring town of Farmington. My grandparents lived in a city called Kirtland. My family is of Mexican descent, so there has always been a strong belief in the paranormal. However, Kirtland sits across the river from a Native American reservation, 
primarily occupied by the Dean tribe, better known as the Navajo. My brother worked at a hardware store in Farmington, where he met many Native Americans who would tell ghost stories and share paranormal encounters. Still, only a select few would ever mention the word skinwalker, mainly those who practiced Christian beliefs. According to their culture, it is a bad omen to talk about them, so while my brother knew of them, he never thought he would actually encounter one. Then, in late April, around 11 p.m., my brother was watching TV in his room when he heard the gravel on my grandparents' driveway shuffle around. At first, he thought it was my grandma letting the dog out, but when he saw the clock and noticed it was past 11 p.m., he realized it was far too late for my grandma to still be awake. Curious, he decided to peek through the blinds. What he saw next shocked him to his core. Crawling across the driveway was a creature with substantial hind legs, a massive torso, a canine-shaped head, and a short snout. This thing stopped, stood up on its hind legs, and looked directly at the window where my brother was peeking through. It began sniffing the air. My brother said he felt like he was in a trance, and he vividly remembered its bright yellow eyes, clearly visible from 15 yards away. After standing there for a while, the creature dropped back down on all fours, ran toward the property gate, and crawled over it with enormous strides that made it move incredibly fast. The next day, my brother called me, still shaken by what he had seen. He told me how he hadn't slept all night because of what happened. I've known my brother for a long time and we have always been incredibly close. I could tell he wasn't lying. His demeanor showed that he was dead serious about what he was saying, and at one point, he even questioned his own sanity. The following day, his native friends at work, those who weren't afraid to talk about these things, told him what they believed he had encountered. But that wasn't the only time the creature showed itself. When my brother was graduating from college, our family came down from Colorado to attend the ceremony. We were staying in a pop-up camper behind the house that night. While everyone was asleep, the creature appeared again. This time, my grandmother was the one who noticed it. She was awakened by the sound of something walking outside the house. When she looked out the window, she could see the camper in the backyard, lit by the moonlight and the motion sensor light by the garage. She distinctly saw a silhouette standing in the middle of the camper, where my two cousins and uncle were sleeping. My grandmother thought it was my uncle, because the figure looked very big, and my uncle is around 6 foot 3 and 260 pounds. This thing was standing there, watching them sleep. One of my cousins later said that he had felt like someone was standing over them while they slept, but he couldn't bring himself to open his eyes. We were all baffled by what was happening. Our family concluded that it was some kind of demon and that something needed to be done. But according to Navajo legend, the skinwalker is a medicine man who went down a dark path, deciding to practice black magic. It can also work as a curse, placed on people or land, by an evil medicine doctor. My brother's friends had asked him if our grandparents lived close to the river, and my brother confirmed that they did, only two blocks away. His friends explained that these evil medicine doctors often used rivers for rituals, because of the energy they carry. They told him that the only way to become a skinwalker is to kill someone close to you and your family. Once someone becomes a skinwalker, the pelt they wear is the animal they shapeshift into. These creatures are feared among the native tribes of New Mexico, Nevada, Utah, and Arizona, and with good reason, as death often follows in their wake. According to Navajo beliefs, since our family isn't native to those lands, the creature can't harm us. It can only hurt those who believe in it or those of native descent. It was deer season in Illinois, and we were all ready to go. My uncle and I had been out checking tree stands and areas, as we'd had poaching problems in these woods. We finished all that, and then he called me to tell me he had lost his wallet somewhere. Since I lived closer to the woods, I told him I'd look for it. Keep in mind it was about 8 o'clock at night. I had never been scared of the dark or the woods, so I went out to check the trail he had walked. I got to the final leg of the trail and saw something in the bottom stocking, or more like stocking. It was sniffing the ground and would occasionally look around and see me with my flashlight. 
Luckily, my fight or flight instinct kicked in, and I headed for the truck as fast as I could. I made it to the car and then heard weird screaming. It was getting louder and closer. I thought, to hell with this, and jumped into the car. As I slammed the door, something ran right past me into the other section of the woods. I was frozen but finally turned the keys in the ignition, and I could see something staring at me from the trees. Now, I have a hard time going to those woods alone. Years later, after this happened, my aunt called me one day to tell me she had seen a black figure walking in the field. It looked like it had a crow's head. When she looked back again, it was gone. After she told me this, her woods mysteriously caught fire and almost burned down the rest of everything nearby. She swears she heard voices and strange noises all night, something tapping on the house, and her dog was constantly losing its mind. So, we put cameras up outside her house. We might have caught a glimpse of this black figure on camera, but when we tried to play back the footage, the camera was offline. They've mysteriously stopped working ever since. There's an old story about a man whose wife took all his money and buried it in these woods. He took her out to the woods, killed her, and dug holes all over, looking for the money. If you go out into those woods, you can see low spots everywhere. I don't know what's in those woods, but there's something wrong. I don't go there anymore. I don't know if it's a ghost, a demon, a skinwalker, or something else lurking in there, but it's unnatural, and it gives me the absolute goosebumps. I'm a teenage guy from Missouri. The story I'm about to share is something odd that happened to me and my friend Jeremiah while we were hunting in the Ozarks. We had tags for almost anything that could be found in the Ozarks, but we were primarily hoping to shoot an elk or just a big buck. Jeremiah is Choctaw, and his mother has always warned us about legends her parents and grandparents told her, mostly stories about Sasquatch and shapeshifters. Neither of us really believed in them at the time. We didn't take anything she said to heart. We felt like we were safe as long as we had our guns. We both carried 30 to 30 Marlin rifles and .44 Magnums, along with hunting knives, that we sharpened every single day. One day, when we went out hunting, we were sitting in our blinds and saw what appeared to be a mountain lion just walking around. Jeremiah aimed and was one breath away from pulling the trigger, but then the mountain lion sat down behind a tree, and he couldn't get a good hit on him. A few moments later, something stepped out from behind the same tree, but it wasn't the mountain lion. It was a bobcat. What the hell? I whispered in surprise. I swear it was a mountain lion that went behind that tree, Rick. I'm not losing my mind, Jeremiah said. We were trying to figure out how we saw a mountain lion go behind the tree and then see a bobcat step away from it. It didn't make any sense. Most bobcats usually stay away from humans, but this one looked right at our blind and started walking directly toward us. It stopped in front of the blind, right under the window where we shot out. It got low to the ground and started to move its whole body like it was about to jump up into the window and pounce on us. Jeremiah took his .44 Magnum, stuck it out the window, and pointed it directly at the bobcat. I'm gonna give you to the count of three, he said. One, two. Right before he said three, the bobcat got up and walked off as if it understood him. It gave us a glance over its shoulder, almost as if it was trying to intimidate us. We started talking about this weird encounter, and later on, we laughed it off. But after we had some time to think about it, we started wondering if what we saw was a skinwalker or a shapeshifter. That would explain why we saw a mountain lion go behind the tree and a bobcat come out in its place, and why the bobcat seemed to understand Jeremiah's threat. After that day, I learned to never take a simple legend with a grain of salt. Listen to your elders. Thanks for sticking around till the end. If you enjoyed the story, don't forget to give the video a like and leave a comment with your thoughts. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a terrifying tale. See you in the next one.